In today's show, we're going to talk about Power Apps filtering a gallery based on the user. So the idea is you want to have a gallery of information, you want to store all your data in one list, but you want your gallery just to show the logged in user the information that they should see. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about how to do that in a very simple way. We're going to talk about how to do that in a little bit more of a robust way, a little harder for you, but better in the long run. And then just talk about some other little pieces along the way. Should be a pretty quick topic, but I just thought since I've gotten this question so much recently, we should make a quick video. But first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys. In today's show, we're going to talk about Power Apps filtering a gallery based on the user. And this request, I keep getting it. I've gotten it. I just got it an hour ago. That's what made me say, all right, let's go make the video. So that's why I'm down here instead of, you know, enjoying a happy Friday. Chewies are there napping. I'm kind of jealous of that, but whatever. But so what I wanted to do in this video was just talk about different ways that you can store the user value and then how you can take advantage of that to filter the gallery. Um, if you know stuff we've covered in other videos kind of like in little piecemeal actions but I thought this was a standalone enough concept that we just go through it in the end talk about some of the ups and the downs some of the different things I've seen also we're going to use a SharePoint list uh, for some of our examples here but once again this is not exactly tied to SharePoint anyway so you can do any of this whether you're using SQL or CDS or any other data source and some of those other ones like CDS might even introduce some additional options but we're not going to get that far down the rabbit hole. I'll, I'll hold back. I'll, I'll look into self-control. So anyway, good fun video, good refresher for some of you. That's okay. So if we switch over here to my desktop, here is an app that I built called Not a Fancy Customer Note App. And the idea, I guess we'll just hit play so we can run it real quick, is in my app, you know, you have these different um, pieces you can look at. And then I can come in here, I can edit a record. And more specifically, I can create a new one, right? And let's see, we'll call this one... Um, Luke's video games, video games, right? Games and let's see, play all day for free. Cause that seems like Luke. Luke's a very giving child when it's my money. So, so there you go. So, right. So just a simple little app. Now what happens a lot of times is you have this one app and you're, you want to capture these notes, but you'd really rather this, instead of showing me all of the users notes, you want me to come in as a normal note enterer and only be able to see the notes that I've put in in the past. Very, very common request. And so the way that we can do that is over here on the gallery that we've added, right? The items property, we can filter this data. And so the first idea you might have would be to say, all right, I'm going to just do a filter customer notes. And there's a separate video I'll link down below where I covered filter in greater detail, but we're not going to get into the, the nuances of filter today. But we're going to say filter customer notes. And what you probably say, well, you know, in SharePoint, right? Because we're using a SharePoint list. There is a column called created by, and there is a display name, right? Or an email, or interesting. So I could say created by email equals. And so then you could do a function like this, the user function, which I guess there's a separate video on that. I'll link to that too. I'll, I'll be linking a lot apparently, but you can do user.email. And so if we close this out and we cross the little fingers, we might see some stuff we might not. And so one of the couple of things that's happening here. So one is you can see that we're getting a delegation warning. So that means that this isn't being processed by our data source. This is actually being processed uh, locally. So that means if your list has more than 500 items by default, you're going to have uh, problems where it's not going to get all the items in your list. And more specifically, you can update that list, that limit to 2000, but 2000 is the hard limit. So you can't go any further than that. So this isn't going to be a good idea for that. You can also see that even though I clearly created this, I'm not seeing it and I'm not really sure why. So here's what I would do to troubleshoot this. Let's get rid of this filter. So I'm just going to use uh, control Z. So put it back to where we started. No, no, no. All right. Fine. We just won't use cut. We'll just do it this way. So that puts all of them here. So that would go down here and say, all right, so instead of show me this item dot note, I'd say show me this item dot uh, created by and then dot email. So Shane at PowerApps911. All right, oh, look, I created all of them. Shocker. So then I'm going to insert a label. I'm just going to, oh, not inside there, though. Get rid of that. We'll just go right over here, insert a label. And so then what we're going to do here is we're going to say, well, that user function, what do you see? And so then this is going to show me. So this is a very common problem, right? 
So we were trying to do a comparison. We said where this equals this. Remember, Power Apps is case sensitive. So even though the email addresses are the same, they both say, right, we'll kind of drag it up here so you can literally see it. They both say Shane at Power Apps 911. One has got capital Shane and the other one has got lowercase Shane. So that's why the match wasn't happening in this scenario. So what we could do, I guess we can come over here and we say, all right. Um, so we know that it comes in like that. So one option would be to go back up here and say, okay, let's put our filter back in here. So filter customer notes where created by dot email equals user dot email. Boom. So we know this doesn't, I mean, we know this would technically work, but it's not matching because they don't match. So you might use a function like lower and say, hey, just take that, convert it to lower, and then take that and convert it to lower. And so then now both sides of the equation should have a lowercase uh, Shane at Power Apps 911 for the matching portion. And so that's why you see the data. Now, once again, though, remember blue squigglies, yellow warnings means delegation is happening to you. So your SharePoint list is not, um, or your query is not being processed on the SharePoint side, it's being processed on the Power App side, which means you only get the first 500 or up to 2,000 records, depending on what you have over here in this app setting advanced. And so by default, it's the first 500. So if your list has a million items, only the first 500 are getting queried. Probably not going to work very well. And also, this is showing you a SharePoint scenario, but this could happen to you in SQL as well if you were trying to match and you're using this lower because this lower function can't be delegated. So anytime you see this, watch out for your limits. But that's okay because we don't really want to do it this way, but I wanted to show you why you shouldn't do it this way. Okay? So if this was a requirement you gave to me, I'll just put this back to just regular customer notes so we don't confuse ourselves. Here's what I would want you to do. I'm going to go over to SharePoint and I'm going to add a column. So I can just click over here and we'll say view data sources. And it's going to show you all the data sources, which is going to be my fancy customer notes if it ever finishes loading. Okay, so there it came. It took it a second. I, who knows? So one of the tricks you can do, hit this button right here and say edit data. This is super handy because this is going to take me straight to my SharePoint list. Yay. So then I'm going to come over here. I'm going to add a column. And I never like to use this add a column here because I feel like it can do what it wants to do. So I had to go over here the old school way. So I'm going to say list settings. We're going to say create a column. And we're going to name this creator email. Now, notice I did not put a space in here. Notice Chewy is over there having problems. Um, but so notice I did not put a space in here because when you create it, whatever you use as the name when you create it, it's going to be what the field name is, what we have to reference in Power Apps. We don't want to mess with spaces. So call it creator email. And then we're going to do single line text. And we're going to say, OK. Boom, now we have creator email. So then what I'm going to do, because you don't like that, I'm going to click on it, and I'm going to go back in here, and now I can put the space in, and then say OK. And so this just gets rid of that problem in SharePoint, right? If we hover, look down, look right down here when I hover over creator email. Notice that the field name is still creator email, even though we put the space in there. But now we don't have all that X20 stuff, so very helpful. OK, so now we have a creator email column that is a single line of text. Let's go back over here. And if you were doing this in SQL, right, we would have just made a text or a varchar column over in SQL, right? So this isn't just SharePoint, varchar column over in SQL, same results. Okay, so now we have that column. So I'm gonna go over here to my form where I do data entry, and we're going to edit fields. We're gonna add a field because we need to update that column, right? And so there is a column now. Oh, nope, it is not here. Why is it not here? Because we need to refresh our data source. So we hit X. We're going to go here to view data sources again. And then we're going to click refresh here, right? Because that's going to go fetch the new column. So it got all the new data, which wasn't new data, but it got the new schema, which was our new column. Same for SQL. So there you go. So now over here, we can click edit fields. We can add a field. And there is creator email. Woohoo! We're going to say add. And so right now it's blank. So let's click, hold down the Alt key and press edit so we can see. Now, I don't want users typing in their own emails because users are untrustworthy, right? We, we can't trust them to do anything. So what I'm going to do is I am going to um, change this a little bit. And I'm going to say, all right, we're going to unlock the card. Boop. And so instead of default being parent.default, we're going to say your default should be user.email. 
So that would be the logged in user's email address, right? There I am, Shane at PowerApps911. And so then what we can do is we're just gonna say, all right, in this field, instead of um, the display mode being tied to the parent's display mode, we're just gonna say, hey, your display mode is always going to be view. So that way they can't edit what goes here in the creator email. You could also get more complicated. So right now, if we look at the default, it is always set to user email. And what you might do though, is you might really say, you know what, instead of making it always that, that doesn't really make sense. We'd say, if form one, right, that's the name of our form, form one dot mode equals new, or so it would be form mode dot new, sorry, form mode dot new. So if the form mode is new, then I want to make it user.email. And if it's not that, then I want it to be parent.default. Right, so that's the more correct formula because you don't want to modify this every time. You want it to follow along. So if the form mode is in a new mode, then it'll be the user email. If not, it's in parent.default. So that way you're always, you're not messing with the data. Okay. All right. And so then now we should be able to see that. Let's just cancel out of here. So Right now, creator email is blank, but if we do a new one, right? And so this is new customer. They are the best. Boom. And we're not going to fix my typos. We hit save. And so then now the creator email for this one, right? If we click on it, is Shane at Power Apps 911, but all these other ones still show blank. And if we change them, they're not going to uh, get messed up either because we wrote that little function. Okay, so now we have a way to store the actual email address of the creator from behind the scenes. So then now we can go back over here. And so we're gonna change this. We're gonna say filter customer notes where creator email, there it is, equals user.email like that. Oh, it looks like it's a little mad at me. So this should work though. Let's make sure it works, okay. And so what it's saying is, hey, I can't delegate, I can't send this function over to SharePoint, so I gotta do it all myself. So this comes up, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this, I'm gonna say Control X. I'm gonna go over here to the app, and I'm gonna say on start, I'm going to say set var user email. Yeah, that's not how I would do it. I would do this, I'd do var user to be user like this. This is in almost every app I write. So the idea now is that every time the app loads, we just store the user's value in the variable because that way I don't have to use that function 8 million times, which sometimes you guys get in the habit of doing. So then now over here we're gonna say, for the gallery, we wanna filter this for creator email equals var user dot email. So it should be the same end result, boom, but we don't get any of those little pesky yellow warning triangles because we are now referencing a variable, which is fine, instead of referencing a function, which calls delegation. And that would have been the same whether it had been SharePoint or SQL or just about any data source. So this is the, the more correct way to uh, put that in place. But now we've got just what we wanted. Instead of seeing all of the users here, we're only seeing, or sorry, all the uh, customer notes, we're only seeing the customer notes that me, the logged in user set. So that is, in a nutshell, how I would do this for you, or at least introduce you to the topic. Now, you noticed over here that we were showing the creator email. That's pretty confusing, quite frankly. So what I would probably honestly do is come back over here and click on this card. And so now that I know it works and does everything because I can see and I saw it was functioning the way I wanted, I would just change the visible to off. And now no one even sees it, right? But if we do a new entry, and so let's we'll call this new two, more. And if we hit save, right, this is gonna show up over here, even though you couldn't see it get referenced. So, and then if I logged in as Chewy and came to this same exact app, what would happen? Chewy would not see anything because Chewy hasn't created any record yet. Should we, should we do that just to show you to prove that works? Probably. So, hang on one second, let me switch over and grab a Chewy window. I'll be right back. Okay, we got logged in as Chewy, right? And you always tell because he has the purple browser and his cute little doggy pictures up here. So we're gonna switch back over here real quick because what do we gotta do? We gotta save this app and share it with him, duh. So save, publish, publish this version, and then share this app. And then with Chewy the dog, yep, that looks good, so share. All right, that is done. We'll go back over here, we'll say like this. And so if we refresh, hopefully Chewy can see the app just that fast. Okay, so now after a few seconds there, Chewy got the email, I clicked on the link, and so now Chewy's gonna open the app. 
And so here, right, Chewie's in, he sees nothing. And so then now he can say, all right, I want to create a new record. And so what is the customer name? Um, Chewie did this. Nap time. He's really annoyed I've said his name too much. So I say save. And so Chewie sees it. And if we switch back over to my version, right, I do not see it. Right? We'll even refresh the data just to make sure. And so there you go, right? So Chewie and I both looking at the same app, the same controls, but we see different data because the gallery is filtered by the user, okay? So that was the first thing I want to cover. The second thing I want to cover is some of you will probably point out that the way that I did this, so let's go back over here, let's go back to our form, I'm going to take our creator email and I'm going to make it uh, visible again so we can mess with it. So right now I'm doing everything as user.email. Oh, you know what, and I should have changed this to be var user dot email okay yeah doesn't make matter, matter but that would be the more efficient way to write my code all right it's a little faster anyway so so you point out well what if the email changes now all this is going to break i want to store the user's id that's fair but with the user function that we have access to or the user function we use so far we don't have access to the id so if you want to do it with the id then what you're going to need to do is you're going to or view data sources add another data source we're going to type Office 365 users. And so then right here we've got um, the users control. And so what we can do here, we'll just throw a label on the screen real quick to show us what we see. Throw it down here. But so then now you can do Office 365 users and then you do my profile like this. And then you're going to do um, a little bit down here. And so there's the ID. And so then this should return my user's GUID. There it is. All right, so then that's not tied to my email address or my um, uh, username or anything like that, right? It's, a, it's an ID that is unique to my account. So then if that was the way you wanted to go, what I'd probably do, copy this. I'd go back up here to app on start. I'd be like, all right, how about this? We'll just say set bar user ID. Boop. There you go. And then we'll right click on this and say run on start. And so then now here, instead of if this set it to var user email, it would just be var, ah, var user ID. And so then if not, it'd be uh, parent.new. Very cool. So then if we do play, if we do a new record, there you go, you can see that being in there. And this is the reason you wanna make the form uh, the card visible while you're testing and building because you want to see that it's showing what you want, right? So try with ID. ID are fun. There you go. And so then we say save. Um, we'll delete this label off the bottom because that's weird. And so then now we'd say filter customer notes where creator email equals bar user ID. And so then just like that, we should see there's that. And then, oh, that's still showing the created by email, but you could just do this. So this item dot um, creator email, which is no longer an email address. So it's probably a silly name to give the column, but it's doing it. So this is the same thing, the same results. All right, would work just the same in Power or in SQL as it would in SharePoint or any other source. But the idea now is that we're tracking the ID. The reason I don't do a lot of this is because really email addresses and things don't change much. And now if you wanted to show this person's um, name, you don't have, or their email address, or you want to send them something, you don't have that. So what you'd have to do here would be like insert another label. And so then this would be this item, or no, it would be Office 365 users, and then it would be a search user, or no, it would be user profile. Where's user profile? It's down. Or in a spell chain user profile v2, what is their ID? That would be this item dot creator email because of the weird naming that we did here. And then now you could then do dot display name. And so you'd get their name back, right? So the problem with this is if you've got a hundred or a thousand items in the directory, right? Or in the gallery, then it had to go run this function, this lookup a thousand times, once for every item in the gallery to go get this back, right? Because now the data doesn't exist. All you had in the record, right? Because Power Apps wanted to show you this record. You have the record, you have this ID. If you want to translate this ID, then you have to go do a lookup and uh, find the email address or find the name 
and that can make your app a lot slower. So then you have to start looking for creative ways around it. Maybe if it's truly this scenario, we could just store the user's display name in a separate variable, right? There's ways around it, there's ways to optimize it, which is too deep for this video. That's one of those rabbit holes I promised I wouldn't go down. But you need to think about that. This times 100, if there was 100 records here, is not very efficient code. And so it might be fine on my super PC here, but might melt a cell phone if you're trying to use it on a phone there. So just things to think about. Oh, I just remembered one last thing while I was almost ready to hit produce on the video. Um, so another thing to keep in mind though with this method, especially in a SharePoint scenario, is remember that while we're filtering the data in your Power App, they have access to that SharePoint list. They can go around your app to go see the data. So don't try and use this method to secure you know, actual confidential information. Uh, what I really recommend is I just put out a video a little bit ago, and I'll link to it below. <laughs> so many videos to link to. But in that video, I talk about environments and the security ramifications and how to get around them. If you haven't watched that one or if this idea that the user can cheat your app doesn't make a lot of sense, go watch that video, okay? All right, back to what I was just doing. But, but I think that's enough. I think that gets you guys kind of wrapping your heads, hopefully, or you watch this video and leave me comments below and say, hey, silly, you forgot to show us this or that. But this is how I solve this problem because it comes up again and again with my customers, right? We want to be able to filter the data to only show people their request or the things that they entered or things that have been assigned to them. And so this is what we end up using is none of the special columns. We end up storing a unique identifier, whether that be the email address or the, uh, the actual ID, which we showed both in this video. And then we filter the data based on that. So hopefully this helps you out. Um, if you have any questions, leave me notes below. But if not, thanks and have a great day. Hey, it's me again. If you got a second, click the subscribe button. That always keeps me making more videos. Or if you want to work together, need some help getting your Power Apps going, hit me up at Power Apps 911. Always happy to work together. Or finally, if you're really just looking for more videos, that's probably what it is, check out the Power Apps playlist over here and you know enjoy that. All right, thanks and have a great day.